Hi, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from sunny Miami. Today we have another in the continuing series of the online first neurosurgical uh, conference. Uh, the main topic is brain tumors, and we have the honor of having Carlos Yumaguano, MD, a neurosurgeon uh, originally from Spain that has worked extensively. He trained, I believe, in Hungary, uh, and he's done some extensive work down in, in, in Ecuador, and he's currently in Spain. He's going to talk about the pituitary tumors and uh, surgical indications. We're also joined by a couple of board members, panel members. We'll start with you. Hello, Simon. Hello, uh, and Carlos, thank you very much for presenting again. I always learn a great deal from your presentations. Thank you so much. Looking forward to this. Thank, thanks, Simon, and uh, Slavin. Hello. Uh, very glad to be here. I'm looking forward to your presentation, and uh, this is a great conference to be on. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Carlos, thank you for coming, and it's all yours. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, today uh, we, we will speak about an uh, pituitary tumors, uh, first of all, on a surgical indications. Um, for we can speak about uh, the pituitary tumors. Uh, we must know uh, some key points. That's uh, an uh, anatomical and radiological memories of pituitary gland, and a preoperative clinical evaluation and treatment, and a postoperative clinical evaluation and treatment of complications, and what's about the long-term follow-up. If we speak about the size, we can see that uh, the pituitary gland is about 10 to 12 uh, millimeters in diameter. Uh, they have a diaphragm that is a membrane that separates supracellular system. Uh, we have a pituitary stalk. The optic chasm is uh, uh, in about 1, 1.5 centimeter in the distance. And uh, we have laterally the cavernous sinus where is inside it, the carotid artery the third, fourth, five, and sixth cranial nerve. If we have a third, fourth, or sixth cranial nerve lesion, we will be had an epsilateral ophthalmoplegy, like a ptosis, double vision, and dilated pupils. If we have a fifth cranial nerve lesion, we will have a decreased corneal reflex, pain, and paresthesia. In this capture, we can see the anterior and posterior pituitary gland, the pituitary stalk, the optic chiasm, and the lamina terminalis. It's the same when, if we see the pictures in the left side, where is the anterior and posterior pituitary gland. We have an uh, optic chiasm and a pituitary stalk. What's about which kind of tumors will be common in the cellar and paracellar region? We had an pituitary gland, pituitary adenomas, craniopharyngiomas, meningiomas, rat, rat cleft cyst, optic cancer glioma, dermoid, epidermoid, germinoma, schwannoma, and metastasis too. And a pituitary MRI description in a general uh, principle. I'm sorry to interrupt, Carlos. The slides are not uh, moving. We're still on cran uh, craniopharyngioma. Oh, there we are, pituitary MRI. Okay. This now good? Yes, now I can see pituitary MRI, yes. Yeah. We can see in the first, in the, the fat and blood are bright in an enhanced T1. So in this, uh, in this kind of picture, we can see in a hyper-intense uh, correlation of these structures. Normally, a pituitary tissue enhanced contrast. Adenomas, an enhanced contrast, the details are hyper intense. Liquids, such as a CSF, is bright in T2. In this capture, we will see that a pituitary gland will enhance the contrast, such as hyper intense in correlation, and we will see in the upper part the optic gasp. In this capture, we will see 
the CT, the MRI with contrast, where we will see the an, an, an hypotense region, such as a microadenoma, because the adenoma tissue is not capped in contrast. And macroadenoma is not, it has the contrast. In this capture, we will see that the normal pituitary gland or pituitary tissue is displaced at the upper or the left side. In this capture, we will see the optic chiasm is displaced upper and laterally. And in, the, in this region, we, we, we can see tumors such as on a craniofaring tumor, which is the most common in the young patients. This will be on an ice intense without contrast and will be hyper intense with contrast in TT1. In the, in the inferior part, we will see the localization of the pituitary or normal pituitary tissue. A craniopharyngioma is an inhomogeneous tumor. They, they will have an acoustic part and a, a solid part because for this reason they are inhomogeneous contrast enhanced tumor. In this case, in this uh, case, we can see the pituitary gland normally enhance the contrast in the upper and the right part. Other kind of lesions, uh, this region will be an arachnoid cleft cyst, which enhance the contrast, hypointense in T1 and bright in T2 or is an abscess which will be so intense and then enhance the contrast. A dermoid cyst will be a heterogeneous bright in T1. Empty cell, as it is filled with CSF, it's bright in T2. And the other lesions will be a meningioma. An arachnoid cleft cyst is an cystic formation which will be hyper-intense in T1 and hyper-intense in T2, the color is same with the liquid or the CSF in the ventricles. The sarcoid dosis is in a inhomogeneous pathological change, which is uh, why it is very difficult to decide. It is very difficult to define it, the changes produced in this region. It is in some cases producing an autoinflammatory disease, produces granulomas that will be localized in the pineal or in the pituitary region. The meningiomas is in another tumor uh, that will be a stay in the cellar region. In some cases, this will be issue intense with the great matter, and it will be enhance the contrast, and the, this will be on a hyper intense. The germinomas is other kind of heterogeneous tumor that it will be percent uh, very common in um, a skull base or in a pituitary region or cellar region tumor that is common in the young patients between 12 and 16 or 14 years. Another kind of tumor is an achondrosarcoma that it will be present to near the pituitary region or cellar region that it will be the same heterogeneous and it's a slowly growing tumor. 
what to do when the patient comes to the outpatient clinic. And the first thing we must to calm the patient, we must to say that it usually is a benign lesion. It's not a brain cancer, not a brain tumor. It's a slow growing tumor. The duplication rate of an adenoma is one or two years. How can we manage this kind of tumors? Observation. Yeah, let's see to able for handling a group of patients, particularly if a big gathered to a small that do not compromise the visual pathways and which is incidental finding in, a, in the course of study of headache or other neurological symptoms unrelated. Clearly, only those secreting pituitary adenomas are accessible to drug treatment. Other pituitary tumors and non-functioning pituitary adenomas are not suitable for drug treatment and could justify a surgical strategy. The anatomical and radiological considerations are very crucial in these kinds of tumor. What about the surgery? Surgeon experience is very important in these kinds of tumor management. The expertise of the one surgeon is if the if the this specialist in this kind of tumor doing more than fifty cases per year, that will be give uh, to us and a two four times less complications, two three times more chance of cure. In order to say this, uh, it's important the lesion says. In more than 50%, there will be an macroadenomas more than 3 centimeter, 4 or 5 centimeter. In some cases, these tumors will be around about 8 to 10 centimeters in diameter. If bigger the tumor diameter, it is less possibility, less chance to do an correct tumor resection. Less chance of cure if the if cavernous sinus and a supracellular extension for the tumor. And we need to know about the consistency and vascularization of the tumor. So it's very important that we need to have an a surgeon who doing you had a good expertise and pituitary tumor resection. What is about the objectives in this kind of pituitary surgery? First of all, the compressive structures as the optic nerve. Remove as much as possible of hormone producer tissue. Avoid produce additional neurological damage and try to keep health too sure. So it is important to do an a good neurological elements decompression. What about a surgical approach? How we can choose what is the good approach for solution of particular cases? In about 90% of pituitary tumors, the choice appro approach are the transphenoidal. A transcranial approach, such as subtemporal or terminal craniotomy, we can use if even extension we have an middle fossa or a very large supracellular component. The goal in all microadenomas is to reset more than 95% of 
the tumor mass. Transesferoidal approach, whether with microscopic or endoscopic assistance, it is the first alternative in the most cases. For the transphenoidal approach, we can have a contraindication such as a presence of a small cell, predominant supracellular component, presence of kissing carotids, that is, carotid arteries are very close in the midline, such we can see here the carotid, the right and the left carotid artery is very near and it is impossible to keep out to the cellular region for resecting the tumors. The presence of a little pneumatized sphenoid sinus as an variant. What about the complications for these kinds of approach? This approach allows us an uncompressed the visual pathway safely with risk of a morbidity less than 15% and mortality less than 1%. Vision, it remains stable or improved in about 82% of patients. The primary complications of these pathways are nasal septum, septal injury, temporary or permanent diabetes insipidus, deterioration of hormonal functions, CSF fistula, infection, visual pathway of nerves of the cavernous sinus injury, carotid artery injury. Approximately a hospital stay in this kind of surgery is three or four days. Case when we can see on a pituitary tumor that enhances contrast. This is a sagittal view. We can do it just with transferoidal approach. <clears throat> in a case two, the same, in a 67 old patient with an uh, hypopituitary, we can resect the tumor spreading into the cavernous sinus and supracellar just by transferoidal approach. The same case, third and fourth cases, and is a do it, the resection of this kind of tumor, what about the transferoidal approach, resecting in more than 95% of tumor mass. In other case, we can see in a very large pituitary tumor that is an inhomogeneous with a cystic counterweight that will be after an a pituitary apoplexy. This patient was operated transesphenoidal too. In some cases, when the tumor or the pituitary tumor and has a small dimension, when the anatomical structures have a subkinds of variants, we can use so many reserves to ensure the patient and a good surgery and a good results after the surgery. We can use uh, Israel arc, we can use on a microscope, or we can use on a neural navigation. So, for this kind of tumor, this was a 58 
years uh, old years patient who had an acromegaly. He was operated with neural navigation and it will be ensured to us to resect the tumor part spreading to the cavernous sinus in the right side. This is another case with an acromegaly patient. We had an, a very small pneumatized um, uh, sphenoid sinus, but we have an enlarged uh, cella. That is good for us. That's which we will be choice. We will uh, we choose this approach, and the tumor was resected in more than 95 percent. It's the same in the other case that is resected via transfinoidal approach. And we can see in this kind of tumors when we can do it, we can use the neural navigation in this cancer patient. With these tools, we can ensure to the patient the good resection for the pituitary humors. What's about an appropriate management? We must know that it's in a programmable surgery, except if we have an abision loss, cranial nerve pulses, or pituitary apoplexy. We must replace corticoid and thyroid and diabetes insipidus. We must to do an acortical substitution previous to thyroid substitution to prevent adrenal crisis. The traditional method is 100 milligram of hydrocortisone every six or eight hours, and all patients is charged with replacement dose. The cortical substitution is hydrocortisone 100 milligram before surgery and 100 milligram every six hours in the first day. In the second day, we must to do an abessal corticoid analysis. If the corticoid is more than 10 micrograms per deciliter, not corticoid replacement needed. If it is less than 10 micrograms per deciliter, the patient needs it while the sonar replacement. Adrenal insufficiency always has the instructions and contact telephone for the patient and for the nurses. If previous adrenal insufficiency, we need to do an a substitution. Shame. What about the diabetes insipidus? It's temporary in about 30 percent and permanent at 0 0.5-15 percent. Not to be confused with polyuria due to overlight saline or osmotic secondary to hyperglycemia. This will be sudden at 24-48 hours after surgery. We need to determine diuresis and urinary density every hour or every two hours. If diuresis is more than 200, 250 milliliters per hour for two hours straight and density is less than 1.1005, the patient will need hydrasmopressin, one or two micrograms subcutaneously, intravenously or intramuscular. The effect lasts between six and 12 hours. That is the reason not need to repeat anti-polyurea. 
and natrium plasma at least daily until resolution or stabilization. This is the half to know what's about the triple facet. After surgery, the, pre the patient will present diabetes insipidus because they will be produce a neuronal, a neuronal shock and the patient will, will need andresmoprosin. After that week, the patient will present a syndrome of, of immune or insufficient antidiuretic hormone secretion for axonal degeneration. In this moment, the patient will need a water restriction, water suppression. After that, the patient will be again present a diabetes insipidus. This will be produced because we will have a neural neuronal damage and the patient will need a desmoprocent advisement. What about the diabetes insipidus treatment at the discharge at home? A discharge desmoprocent intranasal spray, usual dose one puff every 12 hours. The patient needs to spend desmoprocent one time per week. The hydration test is usually not necessary in these cases. Natrium and osmolarity control a week and later every three months. There are documented cases of recovery of function even after a year. In a postoperative evaluation, approximately 6% of patients recover some degree of auditory function. I thought unlikely, it's no indication assess the need for chronic replacement therapy. Assessment at six weeks of surgery. What about the remission in non-producer tumors? No visible injury in post-operative MRI and no increase in size in the mining tissue. MRI annually for five years and an even for every two years. Recurrence in 16% of patients until 20 years later lifelong follow-up. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, you Carlos. Much. Carlos, go ahead, Carmen, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, were there any questions on the tweet board? Uh, yes, well, we have we have one here. Let me get it here real quick. Uh, can you describe by which lateral approaches can you operate in the anterior cranial fossa? Yeah. Just a moment. Uh, uh, I, I saw that, uh, for example, when uh, after the after surgery, in um, uh, when uh, it's coming the the diabetes insipidus, we 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 need uh, to to know what about the triple face. Uh, for example, after after surgery, uh, the diabetes insipidus will be. Uh, will be presented in, in abrupt uh, form. So, in first time, uh, we present the diabetes insipidus, the, the patient had an, 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 an enough m amount of um, diuresis because uh, after surgery, they will be have an, uh, some neurological or change in the, in the uh, acts of functioning. For this moment, there, there is not half uh, any kind or any mechanism to, to do an, uh, an, uh, water um, state regulation. In this moment, we, need, we will need to the, give to the patient a desmoprocin. 
So with this mechanism, we can regulate, we can uh, incite the patient to take an abnormal um, water uh, percentage in the, in, in the, in the body. Mm -hmm. In the second phase, there will be an uh, enorm secretion of antidiuretic hormone. This is the contrary of the diabetes insipidus. So the patient will not be have an, um, a, an, a, an, a, an a normal urine, or will be have an normal urine, but the, um, the uh, homeostasis of the patient will be changed very now. In this kind, the, 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 for example, the, the, the natrium uh, percentage will be very low because uh, uh, they will, then the, the, uh, the amount of water will dilute the homeostasis of the patient. In this moment, the patient, we will be, re we must restrict the, um, the water uh, uh, administration because uh, uh, the patient doesn't need to do any kind of hydration. Mm -hmm. In this case, this, this is an axonal degeneration. Also, uh, when uh, some kinds of manipulation, of some kinds of change after the surgery, the patient or the neurological elements will be degenerate. After that, in the in the third part. We will be have on a diabetes insipidus, or really on a on a bird, um, uh, diabetes insipidus, because in this case we will be see that the patient have on a definite neurological damage. So some kinds of neurons will be damaged, and they will not be produce any kind of uh, anti of the diuretics of desmopressin. So the patient will not be, can regulate the homeostasis. The patient will not be controlled the main time of hydration. For these cases, the patient will need to have an external desmopressin to have an water regulation and the homeostasis for the patient. Very good. Thank you, Carlos. So we have one more question from from uh, Slavin, who uh, his connection is not that great, so he texted to me. He says, you mentioned the optic nerve tumors. Which is the most common case in which you operate on these tumors? Um, yeah, this kind of tumor, for example, uh, um, in the pituitary tumors, uh, uh, in about uh, for 40, 50, or 60 percent, is an not producer tumors. So the, in this in these cases, the tumor is growing uh, uh, more than uh, six, eight centimeters in diameter, and they will compress the anatomical elements such as an um, optic cast an optic nerve, uh, and uh, the patient will have a an, uh, an, um, loss of vision. In these cases, the, the indication uh, for, the, um, uh, for the surgery is to uh, decompress the um, neural elements, so in this case, for the, the compressed optic chiasm and then the optic nerve. In other case, in some Tumors that uh, that are, for example, uh, is an a uh, producer's tumors like an uh, acromegaly, which uh, in which case the growth hormone is uh, overproduced. In this case, uh, if we have that the tumor is is is, is, is in a bigger mass, uh, more than two centimeters, there is a, a, they had an a compress effect. We need to, to do another compression. We need to reduce the tumor mass. Uh, we need to resect more than uh, for 95 percent. And after that, uh, we can um, we can uh, do it on a, on a pharmacological treatment too. 
In these cases, uh, for in these kinds of tumors, for example, it's in, uh, uh, prolactinomas or, or uh, prolactin uh, producer hormones uh, tumors, it uh, is not indicated for the such. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Simon, do you have any comments uh, or questions for Carlos? Yes, please. Thank you uh, for your presentation, Carlos. I have one question. Um, you will, I know you, uh, you travel and do neurosurgery, uh, for example, when you're in Ecuador and Spain. When you uh, are operating on a pituitary tumor, do you have to adjust your approach to fit the protocol of the hospital you're going to, or do they adjust to you? Uh, it, it is very important that uh, that is not just an, uh, an a do it uh, for some neurosurgeons or some pituitary surgeons. This is an, uh, an a pro international protocol that will be. Okay. Had. Oh, I see. International. The international Rasheen. protocol. Yeah. Rasheen, do you have any questions or comments? Can you hear me? I guess. Oh, okay, I, I, I have a question myself, uh, Carlos. How hard are the perineoplastic consequences of pituitary tumors? Yeah, in, 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 I, I said that the first, uh, in the first um, time that is a pituitary tumor is not a cancer in the first time. In the second time, the pituitary tumor is in a, is a, in a, in a, uh, enough variety of uh, or enough kinds of tumor. They, they will be have an, uh, uh, tumor producing uh, gout hormone, tumor producing a uh, TSH, tumor producing an corticoids, so or a tumor producing an prolactins. That for these kinds, of, uh, it, it, it the important thing is how to manage these kinds of patients. It's not just a, it's not just a surgery. It's in a complex uh, therapy needed the patient. The therapy will be managed for the, not for just for the neurosurgeons or the pituitary surgeons. Uh, it, it is very important the paper that will be have an uh, endocrinologist because they will be managed. They will be following very near the patient. And they will be had to determine if the patient need or not to have an, a hormonal replacement uh, for a temporal period or definitively. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rakesh, do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Dr. John, I was a bit late. You know, sorry. Yeah, well, it was a very nice presentation, uh, though I was in between. I have one question. Uh, in uh, pituitary tumors, uh, uh, if the uh, prolactin, the level of prolactin is more than 500, I heard it's firstly managed medically with bromocryptin. And if it is less than 500, we go with the surgery. So how often do you stick with this protocol? Uh, in the prolactin, uh, I think not just uh, to know what is the level of the prolactin uh, in the blood or in the plasma, it's important uh, which is the change that we we'll, we have in the pituitary region. If we ha we we are sure that uh, we we have in front of us an prolactinum, we need to know if this tumor had or not some kinds of uh, mass effect. If if the mass is comprising the optic cans or the optic nerve, if they will have or produce some neurological deficits. If it doesn't do any kind of these complications, the treatment is just pharmacological. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, one more question, please. Sure. Uh, it's uh, just for uh, beginners in the pituitary surgery. The standard now is a transpinoidal uh, uh, surgery for pituitary tumors. So I just wanted to ask, uh, how long did it uh, take for you to learn a transpenoidal surgery? So how many surgeries? So how difficult is transpenoidal? And how common are the comp uh, uh, dreaded complications like uh, injury to internal carotid artery? Um, uh, uh, it, uh, the, um, for for uh, for uh, the expertise, for uh, if if we want to say that. Uh, 
uh, one uh, neurosurgeon or one pituitary surgeon had a good experience, they had uh, uh, ensured the patient and a good, good results, they must to do in a minimum more than 50 uh, pituitary surgery in the, in the year. Just uh, in, a, in, a, in a transphenoidal approach. If, 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 if some specialists do it more than 50% or more than 50 cases per year, they will be having a good practice to do this kind of surgery. This will be reduced very importantly the um, complications percentage. In my, in my, in my experience, I don't have at this moment any kind of, of carotid uh, artery lesions. Uh, never mind. I, I, I'm doing more than uh, 250 uh, um, surgeries during uh, 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 the past uh, three or five years. Okay, okay, okay Carlos. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank I you. have, one more, I have one, one more question, Carlos. How common are the growth hormones secreting neoplasms? in the pituitary. How common? Yes. This is, uh, if, 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 if we divide the, the, um, the kinds of uh, pituitary tumors, in a, uh, I saw that in, in more than 50 percent is uh, just a uh, non-producer's uh, pituitary tumor. And in uh, other kinds, about I think in um, 20, 30 percent will be uh, in Ecuador. In Ecuador, I, I saw it in Ecuador that uh, is I think maybe in a 20 or 30 percent will be an a growth hormone producers uh, pituitary tumors. I think it's I, I see less uh, prolactinomas there. Uh, I see the two or three cases or. Or corticoid uh, producing tumors. Very good, very good, Carlos. Uh, excellent, and uh, answer some great questions. Uh, Rakesh and Simon, uh, any more comments, questions for Carlos before we we finish? Uh, that was a nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Rakesh. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Oh, Rakesh, by the way, uh, this is Rakesh from India. Carlos, he came in late. Uh, hi. Hi. He's doing, yeah, hello, he's hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much for your questions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah Carlos, Carlos, Rakesh just yeah. took his boards. Yeah, I finished my boards just now. It's uh, in fact just a few hours back. I was very interested in this program, so I've joined it. Uh, thanks a lot. A nice presentation. Yeah, he came right here after his boards to the yeah. hangout. <laughs> yeah. He loves neurosurgery. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I guess we'll end this. Thank, uh, thank you again, Carlos, for another a great presentation. And you'll be back in a couple of hours at 5 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. And the topic will be a, a, awake craniotomy tumors. And we hope oh. to see you then. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, very good, Carlos. Thank you very much for everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a difficult, like you, Rakesh, you brought up that, the transphenoidal. That, is that a, yeah. that's a tough surgery to do, uh, Carlos? Yeah. In the, how, I, it's tough to um, learn? It's tough to learn? Yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. It's, it's hard to learn, huh? Uh, well, I know that endoscopic approaches are common today. <clears throat> Perhaps. What, and, and the scopic sphenoidectomy or, or uh, transphenal? Basal endoscopic, they go through the sphenoid sinus and then they enter the, the cella turca and then adenomas. But I don't know what what is what are your experiences there, and uh, Dr. Carlos. Uh, I, 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 I use a youth in the scope uh, um, several yes. years ago when I was working here in Ciudad Real with my college in um, uh, as well, um, mm -hmm. uh, college. He do it on a, on a endoscopic approach and after I do it the, uh, uh, the basic surgery 
um, we combined endoscope and microscope uh, tools. So it's, yes, it's a, because this is a, this is important that uh, you must to do uh, or you must to use the techniques that we are uh, that you that you are dominated because mm -hmm. uh, just uh, we, in this moment you will ensure the patients in a good results. For example, I, I like very much to do with a microscope. Mm -hmm. Do it very well, but uh, but uh, the endoscopic uh, method is is an is a, is in a good tool too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you can do it just with endoscope, it's a very nice uh, thing. I thought. Yes, thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me right. I just wanted to say that uh, your presentation is as great as some presentations I've watched from some fascinating professors. You can see well, the level of your of your uh, experience. Thank you. Thank you. Could you hear that, Carlos? No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, you're it's still, you're, yeah, you're still breaking up, uh, Slavin, unfortunately. Yes, waking up. Well, you know, Carlos, the, the questions I asked you, they weren't mine. They were they were Slavins. <laughs> I Slavin pretended I pretended they were mine. <laughs> <laughs> they sounded very smart. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's a he knows a lot of neurosurgery, man. He studies a lot, and he's always he gives lectures to the other neuro students. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know. Uh, had so so in many in many in many cases, the the students know very well more than more than us because uh, yeah. when you when you are an a an a an a doctor, we, when you are an, have an, a, some specialization, after you must work every day, it's just in there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you you will really forget uh, some uh, some things. Because the the basic knowledge of the medicine it's very strong for you if you will be uh, do it again mm -hmm. in a in a medicine school I, I will be mm -hmm. not I will be not I will accept it. <laughs> Is this one reason, Carlos, why you do these lectures? Do you do lectures uh, to educate and also to review uh, the knowledge yourself and to always keep yourself sharp? Yeah, that, you, you seem to like the academic part of, of neurosurgery. This, this, yes, this is uh, because I know I, I am a, I'm a teacher in the university. This is uh, one uh, one of uh, my object, and and second the uh, second goal is because uh, with these kinds of uh, conference, with, with these kinds of presentation, uh, I will to, I, I must review my yeah. knowledge about these uh, kinds of I pathologies. See. I see. Uh, and, and for the second, uh, on the, for the other reasons, because I am in my um, daily practice, I do this kind of surgery. For example, I, I, I do it a lot of um, pituitary surgery, and, uh, and, and I do it in a spine surgery and a, and a uh, tumor surgery because I have uh, 58 cases of Away craniotomies in, in in patients with uh, brain tumors, because the uh, the tumors are located, for example, in the eloquent region, uh, or uh, maybe in a motor strip area, on a sensitive strip area, or they maybe will be in a in a language or area. In in these cases, it is very important. Uh, what will be do it? Uh, what will be the pronostic for the patients? How can uh, how can it stay after the surgery? Because it's not the same if the patient don't have any kind of neurological deficits after the surgery, or if the patient had a, 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 a very important neurological deficits, uh, such as an a, an a, an a some limbs paresis, or maybe. The patient had any kind of possibilities to to have a an a verbal a normal verbal communication. So it's 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 important. And and, and, and uh, in all days I do in this kind of tumor. For example, in 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 a Parkinson uh, disease, uh, I'm doing an a functional neurosurgery because uh, an a functional neurosurgery is not um, not a lot of in the world. So so we are in a small group. 
uh, that uh, really doing the financial and neurosurgery. So uh, it it for me is is a, is a, is an um, is an approve because I need to to revise. I need to review my knowledge in all fields of neurosurgery every every day. Every every week, because I can't uh, I, 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 I can't unfollow that. Very good. Well, Carlos, uh, we have a break for lunch. We're, we're coming back here in uh, about an hour. Thanks a lot. I'll, we'll see you at five. I, I'll send you like fifteen minutes before five. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will see you again. Okay. Okay. Thanks, thank Carlos. You.